Defining differential forms in all their generality will require us to understand tangent spaces and their dual spaces, cotangent spaces. Let's start in Rn. Let P be a point in Rn. A tangent space, TPR, is a set of pairs P, V where V is in Rn as well. At least at this point, V is still technically a point. However, under the identifications p, v to v, the resulting v is a vector. This is because the identification turns the tangent space into a vector space, and its elements v are by definition vectors. Now, when I first saw this, my immediate reaction was the purpose of this. After all, doesn't constructing the tangent space as pairs of points seem redundant if we are going to identify it with one of these points in the end anyways? It's a valid question. But the answer, I think, is that P serves as a sort of base point for us. I can't really give a one-sentence intuition as to what I would mean. I'll instead have to take a brief detour to talk about derivatives. However, this will come in handy as we further our discussions, so I think it'll be worthwhile. While I'm discussing this, keep in mind that the point of the point P in the tangent space is to serve as a sort of base point. What we want is a base point compatible definition of a derivative. This isn't a novel concept. It'd be very useful to be able to move between base points, so it shouldn't be hard to see why we'd need to define derivatives in such a way. Okay, here we go. Let u be an open subset of Rn, and let f be a C1 map. Recall that a C1 map is one that is at least once differentiable. Then the derivative df is a function from Rn to Rm. We can associate this with what is called the Jacobian matrix, which is the following. Finally, we can define a base point version of a derivative. We will use a lowercase d instead of an uppercase one to differentiate these. Suppose we want to change base points, and suppose q equals f of p. Then the derivative dfp is a map from tprn to tqrm, defined to be the following. As we can see, the point p ended up being important. Even after we identified the result to a vector, it directly affected the second component of the pair, which is why it was important in the first place. In fact, we've actually seen these tangent spaces before. A vector field over R3 assigns a vector from the vector space TPR3 to each point P in R3. In this sense, I should point out that it isn't particularly useful to think of a tangent space as a sort of tangent plane. If you didn't do that, anyways, ignore that comment. I just thought I'd mention it since I myself made that mistake. Tangent spaces aren't really anything new. They're an old friend in disguise. Where things get really exciting is cotangent spaces. These are the dual space of tangent spaces. If you're unfamiliar with the notion of a dual space, it is essentially the set of homomorphisms from the set of vectors to the field that they are over. In this case, a cotangent space is the set of homomorphisms from the tangent space to R at P. Again, the at P part is important, it is our sort of base point. Now, you might wonder, why isn't the map to Rn instead of R? That is because we used Rn as an example, and it's a little bit confusing. We could really use any smooth manifold M in its place. Instead of R, the elements of the cotangent space would be a map to the field F that the manifold is over. It just happens that in our example, Rn is the manifold M, and R is the field F. Okay, we are absolutely ready to define differential one forms. In the next part, I'll try to not only define them, but also give several examples and develop some intuition beyond, or perhaps through, the rigorous algebra.